Hi everyone, Suzanne here. I hope you're all well and welcome to So Custom. Today's video is going to be the making of this little number. So if you're interested in seeing that, then let's get started. Starting with the fabric, I'm using this medium lightweight scuba fabric. It has a good bit of stretch in it, really good for a project like this. And on to the cutting out. This is my front. I have two layers of that scuba fabric underneath this pattern piece and one dart. And to mark that dart, I'm popping pins at each of its points. And now replacing those pins with pen marks. So just popping a dot in where that pin pierces the fabric on both sides. And once that's done, just joining those dots up with my ruler. And ready to pin. So starting at the middle, I'm popping my pin through one point out through the other and making sure that those two pen lines on either side are matched up. A pin on the horizontal at the point of the dart, same thing on the other side, and ready to stitch. So no back stitching here, just trying to follow those pen marks the whole way along. And when I get to the centre, rather than sewing right up to the point, I'm trying to just curve there nicely. Just pulling my threads at the end. So that's how that looks. And off camera, I've just tied off my ends and given it a nice press. And of course I've done that on both sides. So now that my darts are in place, I'm ready to add in my back strap. So I have two layers of that fabric underneath this pattern piece and I'm just lining one of those up with one of my fronts, right sides together and pinning and stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start and back stitching at the end. And off camera I just need to give that seam a little bit of a press. So you can see I've went ahead and done that here. And now just to join up the two long ends. So just laying one side over the other, right sides together, making sure my seam lines up and pinning. And I'm going to stitch here between that notch and the end of the strap. So starting at the notch, back stitching at my one centimeter seam allowance the whole way along and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. And again, off camera, I've given that a bit of a press and now I'm ready to turn it right side out. So that's how that looks. So you can start to see the shape that that front piece will give me. So now that my strap is in place, I'm ready to clean up my seams. So my centre front seam and my side seam. And to do that on this dress, I've decided to use a bias finish. So I'm using my bias foot and just some standard shop bought bias tape. I've used this method on my channel a few times before. It's super easy to do. So I'm just lining up the raw edge of my fabric with the centre of the bias tape and then just running through the bias foot the whole way along that seam until I get to the notch at the neck. Back stitching at that notch, pulling the bias at the end and trimming. And that's how that looks. I love this finish, super neat and tidy. So off camera, I've done exactly the same thing with the side seam. And now I'm ready to join my two front pieces together along the centre front. So just laying one front over the other, lining up my edges and pinning, and ready to stitch. So starting at the notch at the neck, back stitching, at my one centimetre seam allowance the whole way down, and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. And 
off camera, I've given that a little bit of a press. Nice and neat and tidy. I love how this looks. So that's my front all prepped. So I have my straps in, got my darts all in, and my seams are all finished. So I'm going to leave my front to the side for a second to work on the back. So I have two layers of that fabric underneath this pattern piece and one dart. So I'm just marking the dart in exactly the same way as I did the front, pinning and ready to stitch. So stitching here again in exactly the same way as I did the front, so not back stitching, giving myself a nice curve just at the centre and pulling my threads to finish. And again, off camera, I've given those darts a little bit of a press. I've tied off my threads, so that's how they look. So now that my darts are sewn up, I'm ready to add my zip at the centre back seam. So I have a little bit of prep work to do here. So I'm just laying one back over the other, right sides together, and pinning between the split and the neckline. And I'm going to stitch here from the top of the split using a normal stitch length until I get to where the bottom of the zip will be and I've indicated that by my double pins. I'm going to back stitch and then I'm going to lengthen my stitch now using the longest stitch on my machine from the bottom of my zip to the neck. And this is just going to help me out to be a little bit more accurate when I put my zip in. So just temporarily holding the top of this seam together with those longer stitches. So that's how that looks. So now to press open that seam and pin my zip down. So I'm just using a standard concealed zip here. I'm laying it right sides together with that seam that I've just sewn making sure the teeth of the zip are lined up directly with that seam in the centre and pinning the whole way down and now just to tack that in place. So I'm just using a contrasting thread here, long tacking stitches through the zip tape and that seam allowance and I'm going to do that on both sides remove my pins and once it's all done that's how that looks and now before I can sew my zip down permanently I just need to remove the tacking stitches I sewed on the machine so just snipping those open from the top and I'll finish that off camera so that's how that looks and all of these preparation steps are just helping me to be a little more accurate and make sure that when my zip is sewn down permanently, it's exactly where I want it to be. I don't have any puckers and it's nicely concealed. So I'm using my standard zipper foot, starting at the bottom of the zip, back stitching, and stitching the whole way up as close to those zipper teeth as I can get back stitching at the end so that's how that looks and of course I do exactly the same on the other side so that's my zip all in place so all I have to do now is remove those tacking stitches I sewed by hand give it a nice press and my zip is installed nice and neat no puckers super happy with that so now I'm ready to clean up my seams on the back so I'm using the same method as I used on the front, a bias finish, and I'm starting here with the bottom of the zip. So I'm just running a little bit of that bias tape right across the bottom on the horizontal. So that's how that looks. And now cleaning up that centre back seam. And I'm making sure here that both the zipper tape and that seam are going through the bias foot. This is a little bit tricky. So taking it nice and gentle from the top of the zip right the whole way down the side of the split and stopping at the hem. And once it's done, this is how it looks. And I've used exactly the same method on the side seams, you can see that here. So that's my back complete. 
so now I'm ready to clean up my neckline. So for this dress, I've decided to close up the neck with a facing. So I have a front facing cut on the fold and two back pieces. And I'm going to start with that front piece and line it up with my neckline on my dress. So I've just finished off that bottom edge with that seam binding and now laying that facing on top of my front right sides together and pinning and ready to stitch. So I'm stitching here at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start, trying to stick to that seam allowance the whole way across and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. And now to try and prevent the facing from rolling to the outside of the dress, I'm going to understitch. So my seam allowance is over to the right hand side, directly underneath my facing. And I'm stitching here just about one or two millimetres away from the seam that you've just seen me sew. Back stitching at the start and back stitching at the end. And that's how that looks. So off camera I've given it a nice press, that's how that looks, and from the outside super neat and tidy. So now before I can attach my back facing I need to attach the straps. So I'm just lining those straps up with my back right sides together and pinning and ready to stitch. And I'm stitching here within my seam allowance, back stitching at the start and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. So now I'm ready to attach my back facing. So I'm just opening up my zip there and exposing that seam in underneath, laying my facing piece over the top right sides together and you can see here I finished off that bottom edge with the bias binding and ready to pin. So that's my facing all pinned in place, my strap sandwiched in between and ready to stitch. So starting at the side seam, back stitching at my one centimeter seam allowance the whole way across, being really careful when I get to those zipper teeth and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. And now before I sew down the side of the zipper teeth, I just want to understitch just in the same way I did the front. So my seam allowance is pressed over to the right hand side, my facing on top and I'm stitching directly through both. Back stitching at the start and the end and that's how that looks. So now that my understitching is done, I can sew my facing down the side of the zipper. So making sure my edges are lined up, back stitching and being really careful here that I'm not sewing into my zipper teeth. So I'm a couple of millimetres away here and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. So I just need to trim off that excess fabric at the corner and turn everything right side out, which I've went ahead and done off camera and this is how it looks. So now that my front and back facing are in, I'm ready to close up my side seams. So just laying my back over my front, pulling those facings up from the bodice, making sure everything's lined up the whole way down the side seam and pinning and ready to stitch. And stitching here from the facing at the top at my one centimeter seam allowance, back stitching at the start, the whole way down the side seam and back stitching at the end. So that's how that looks. And off camera I've just pressed that seam open and you can see I've done exactly the same to the other side. So now that my side seams are all sewn up I'm ready to tackle my hem. So I've just bound the hem just in exactly the same way as I did the rest. I've pressed it up by my hem allowance and pinned and for this dress I've chosen to hand stitch the hem. So I'm using a silk thread and a super fine needle and I'm just running a herringbone stitch right around the hem and up the split at the back. So I'm just picking up a little bit of fabric from the dress and then at a diagonal a little bit of fabric from the hem 
back down at a diagonal to the dress and repeating. And I'm going to do that, as I say, the whole way around the hem and up the split as well. And once it's all done, this is how it looks. Super neat and tidy. So now I just have one last thing I want to do to complete this dress and that is to secure the facing to the side seams. So I'm just making sure the side seam of my facing lines up with the side seam of my dress and I'm going to stitch in the ditch here. So I'm just placing my needle directly through that side seam and running a few stitches from the top of the facing to the bottom, back stitching at the start and the end. So that's how that looks. And with that, this little dress is complete. So I have my crossover at my neck, I've got my facing all in place, got that centre front seam all nicely bound, just like the rest, and the back, that super nice split and my zip the whole way up, my darts on both front and back, and my straps at the back. And from the outside, super neat and tidy. I love how this looks. I zip the whole way down the centre back and those gorgeous crossover straps at the front. And this is what it looks like on. I could not be more pleased with how this has turned out. I love the fit of this. It is so comfortable. This scoop of fabric has just the perfect amount of stretch in it to make it super comfortable but also to give it that little bit of structure so it just skims over your body. That neck detail is so nice. The back straps make it super practical too. As I say, I could not be happier with this. Love this one. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a thumbs up. If you've not yet subscribed, please do. And I shall see you guys in my next one. Until then, I hope you have a fantastic week. Bye folks!